Assalamu alaikum. At the very first outset, I would like to congratulate all the participants of the BIMSCON 2020 in the era of the COVID-19. I congratulate your efforts and hard work. The job you are doing is excellent, I should say, and I know you are getting the prize more and more, and hopefully you will continue it. So with no further delay, myself is Dr. Muhammad Sud Karim. I'm the Associate Professor of Surgery, Chitong Medical College and Hospital. Uh, that's my brief introduction. I will be discussing on tube thoracostomy. Uh, it's a very important procedure in our day-to-day -day life and is one of the life-saving procedure. So with no further introduction, I would like to share my screen. Uh, As I told you, uh, I will be talking on the tube thoracostomy. As it is an international congress of the medical student of upgraded level, I tried to disclose all my information from a standard journal. You know, the, the New England Journal of Medicine is a very high impact journal, you know, better than me. So uh, other than information from other sources, I will try my focus on the information that has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine and some other information from other sources like textbook and other publication. So let's start with a very brief assessment. Can you tell me what are the life-saving operations? As I told you, one is the tube thoracostomy. So what are the other two life-saving operations? Number two, what anesthesia do we use in tube thoracostomy? And number three, what are the lethal six? And number four, what will you do immediately after ICT? ICT means intercostal tube drainage if more than 1200 ml of blood come out immediately. And number five, in my picture or in my slide, you are seeing the 3D image of a chest or rib case. And there is something here you see, there is a fracture on either side of the three ribs and what is it called and what is the diagnosis. So these are the few pre-workshop assessment for you. You will try to answer all those. You know, there are everything or almost anything in the medical science are synonyms are there. <clears throat> Here is also synonyms and a lot of synonyms for the tube thoracostomy. Like chest drain is a very commonly known procedure is the chest drain. You can tell it ICT, intercostal tube drain is Underwater seal drainage, it is a very previous name. The latest name and the uh, textbook name is the tube thoracostomy. Like this, you can call it is a plural drainage. You can call it is intercostal catheter. Thoracentesis, as like as the, the paracentesis and thoracic catheter, a few other names. So. And I will give you some overview on the uh, tube thoracostomy. It's very simple. It's the insertion of a tube into the plural cavity to drain air, blood, water, pus, chyle, or other fluids. So this is very simply the tube thoracostomy. And there are different types of tube thoracostomy bed. Just in a nutshell, this is the picture of a standard chest drain tube so far available in the market, and I will discuss in detail later. Once we will consider a tube thoracostomy, uh, this picture will be in my mind or in our mind, like as a preparation then local anesthetic, there's a tube and cleaning, fixation, so and so. So all these things I will discuss briefly in details. So begin with indications. You know the pneumothorax is the one of the commonest indications for the tube thoracostomy. And there are so many types of pneumothorax. And one of the most dangerous type is the tension pneumothorax. You know it, the once the air enters into the plural cavity but cannot come out. So the intraplural pressure or plural cavity pressure goes up and up. This is called the tension pneumothorax. Sometimes it may be complex. So the air in the plural cavity is known as the pneumothorax. I will try to let you the, know the information and also I will focus on the exam purpose too. So somebody asked in the exam the pneumothorax, what is pneumothorax? 
So there is the ear in the pleural cavity is the pneumothorax and the tension pneumothorax or complex pneumothorax is the most dangerous type. And next is the pneumothorax with the positive pressure ventilation. You know there are so many patients uh, has to go into the ICU or SDU with the chest tube. So sometimes may require the positive pressure ventilation. So that needs the pneumothorax and that needs the chest drain. Hemothorax, you know the blood in the pleural cavity is known as the hemothorax. If the hemothorax is massive, massive means once there is a two third of the lower two zones of the thoracic cavity is full of blood or fluid that is known as the massive. So massive hemothorax is or hemothorax is an indication for the tube thoracostomy. Large pleural effusion, you know the uh, serous fluid in the pleural cavity. And then the empyema. Empyema of many types, you know what I am showing you, the CT picture of the uh, organized empyema thoracis. In this case, you need the chest drain as well as you need the suction device to suck it out. So the pass in the pleural cavity is known as the empyema thoracis. And other one is the chylothorax. Chylothorax means the chyle when collected in the pleural cavity. One of the best example is the Hoskins lymphoma. You know the lymphoma. The Hoskins lymphoma gave rise to the chylothorax. There are few other conditions where the lymphatic abnormalities are there, or the cystic hygroma of the chest or mediastinum gives rise to the chylothorax, but that's not very common. So what is the contraindication of the chest drain? Absolute contraindication is when a patient needs emergency thoracotomy, you cannot wait for the chest drain. So I mean, emergent thoracotomy is an absolute contraindication of the uh, the chest drain. I mean, you understood it. That means once the patient required urgent or emergency thoracotomy, there is opening of the thorax. So that is a contraindication of tube thoracostomy. So what are the relative contraindication? One is the bleeding diathesis. Not only the tube thoracostomy, if the patient suffers from the coagulation disorder or bleeding disorder, uh, there's also laparoscopy is also relative contraindication. So the bleeding diathesis, coagulopathy, these are two relative contracts. Few others also, the large diaphragmatic hernia, when the abdominal content goes into the thoracic cavity. Sometimes patient may suffer from the severe fibrosis or addition of the pleural space, and sometimes the pulmonary bulla, emphysematous bulla. So these are the few relative contraindication of the tube thoracostomy. You see in the slide, if the platelet count is below 10,000, you cannot go for the tube thoracostomy. So for every procedure, you need a counseling. That's very crucial and very important. Even simply catheter, simply IV drainage or uh, the IV uh, cannula, you need the counseling. So in the chest drain, once you will put a tube into the thoracic cavity, it's a very troublesome for the patient and a fretting situation for the patient. So in that case, you need a very proper counseling. You know how to do the counsel. I hope you know you do have a session on counseling. Now, what are the equipment do we need? For every procedure, you have to have a control field. Like once we are going to operate upon a renal stone or urethral stone, we need a we need a uh, what is so called the control field to look at the site of the stone. So in that case, in our pleural tube drainage or test thoracostomy or tube thoracostomy, we need a immediately prior control field if possible if the patient is stabilized. Even then, we need to uh, we need to examine the patient clinically. Sometimes it may miss. Your pathology is on the right side. You may put the tube on the left side. So to confirm it, to make it sure, you need a control film to identify the where is the pathology. You see, in this case, the right side is the pathology, the fluid. You see the fluid level and the gas shadow. Now, what are the other equipment do we need? First of all, we need the sterilized chest tube tray. You see. In every hospital, these trays are available. All the equipment I will tell you one by one. Then all the preparation for the surgery, sterile gown, mask, and gloves. And in the era of the COVID-19, it is very, very mandatory. And you know, is a ER producing or high pressure. Once you will put a tube into the thoracic cavity in the pneumothorax or tension pneumothorax, a gush of air will be come out. So it's mandatory to have all the protective equipment like sterile gown, mask, gloves, for the uh, chest tube drainage particularly. And in the COVID era, uh, different types of masks are available, you know better. And what are the other things? Sterile drapes or towels are mandatory. How many towels are needed? Uh, maybe three, maybe four, so many eye shield, so many types are available. And of course you need the local anesthetic. You know, one of my quiz was, what anesthesia you will prefer for the tube thoracostomy. You can maximum, I mean, most of the cases we prefer the 
local anesthetic agent or local anesthesia. And for the print, print, painting or the prepping, we need the 2% chlorhexidine solution. You may use the povidone iodine also, or a standard as povidone iodine. And we need a needle, 25 to 21 gauss needle to push the uh, injection or local anesthetic. And of course, we need the 10 to 20 cc series. You may use the 5 cc series also, but it is better to have a 20 cc series because in, in this sense, I can tell you, uh, you can use two types of local anesthetic with adrenaline or without adrenaline. Once you lose with adrenaline, you may use 20 cc or 24 cc. But if you use without adrenaline, you may use 10 to 12 cc, 2% only. So you need, of course, the scalpel with 11 blade. I'll show you the in the next slide. This is the Bart Parker blade, what we so call the scalpel. And these are the few things we need. This is the, these are the Bart Parker handle. Different types of Bart Parker handles are there, three, four, and seven. This long handle blade or handle we use during the deep surgery, either in the pelvis or CBD and deeper structure. This is the commonly used number three. Uh, so the number of blades are 10, 11, 12, and 15, you must know it. So this is the number 10 blade, 11 blade, 12 blade, and 15 blade. These are all the blades that can fit with the number three handle. You have to remember it. So number three blade goes with number 10, 11, 12, and 15 blade. In this particular chest drain, we use usually number 11 blade. And the other one of the other use, use of the number 11 blade is the laparoscopic surgery. But for the number four blade, you may need to 20, 22 to 24 blade. And next we need very important structure is the Kelly cup clump. Or if you don't have the Kelly clump, you may use the medium size artery or a straight artery. I personally use the straight artery for it. And you need a fixator, you can fix with the silk, or you may use the proline. That is a non-observable material, you know the silk. And of course, you need a standard size chest drain tube. And chest drain tubes are of different size and different shape are there. This one is the straight flexible silicone tube, and this one is the right angle tube. And different sizes are available from six to 40 friends, you know the friends. But for the adult, we usually prefer 20 to 40 friends. And for the children, we use 6 to 20. That's why before you are telling about the tube, you need an appropriate size, appropriate size, uh, whatever or whenever it is required. So what are the drainage system, plural drainage system? I will tell you in details later. Uh, this is the standard bed available in the Western country, not available in Chittagong right at the moment. I'm not about the, I'm not sure about the data. And this is the commonly used bag. This one is a commonly used bag in our day-to-day -day practice. Very cheap, but it's very costly. But it, you have to have used these sites of blood if preferable or if available. And next, during the uh, drainage system, we need a petroleum-based regular gauze dressing uh, during the, uh, around the, uh, the tube size. And these are the two tubes, the luminal diameter. I'm trying to show you the luminal diameter of the chest drain. As I told you, a six to 40 friends tube, but for the adult with 20 to 40, you can use. But in our day-to-day -day practice, we usually prefer 24 to 30. This or the, so then once the number is increased, the luminal diameter is increased in these cases. One of the other thing, whatever and whichever you are using the medical practices, there is a radio pet line in everything. Even in Western country, you will see the gauze, mop, pet, whatever you are using, they do have a radio pet tag so that you can identify where the tube has gone or where it has been lost or where the kinking or straight or down or up so that you can identify. Even if it missed, you can identify this imaging by the help of the, this radio pet uh, uh, line. Uh, there are a few pores in the, uh, the chest drain tube, usually the six pores, but it may vary on the side. I'm telling you the side pores. Of course, in the front, there is a pore also. So six pores are there is very, very important. If I tell you something on chest tube more, is really flexible. As I told you, the chest tube drains are flexible. It is only 20 inches in long and four to six eyelets. That means four, as I told you earlier. And of course, it's a radio pet line. You see, this is the radio pet line. And there are three types are there. One is the thoracotomy chest tube. It may be straight. This one is straight. This one is the right angle tube. 
we did not use this one. And of course, it is made up of either polyvinyl chloride or silicon. Silicon is a very costly, but commonly we are using the polyvinyl chloride one. Then the other one is the trocar chest tube. That is one, you, I, I hope you have seen the our laparoscopy port, trocar and cannula are there. So in the, and you have seen the suprabiuc cystostomy set that those do have a trocar cannula system. And of course we do have a trocar cannula system in the chest drain set too. So this is the tube and the trocar and cannula. And in earlier days, once we are in the intern in 1996, we used to use the melicot catheter. This is also a, uh, a self-retaining a catheter and melicot catheter, you can use it. But nowadays it does not require anymore. But one important thing is what I'm trying to show you, the side eyelets, the last eyelet of the tube, the last one have to have within the pleural cavity. Otherwise it may leak, it may create a disaster. So once you are in, uh, once you are in uh, putting the chest drain tube, you have to make sure that, that the last port has gone inside the pleural cavity. So how can you choose the size? It depends upon the age of the patient and of course the indication. If the patient has been suffering from the pneumothorax or large pneumothorax like this, you see the, the lung has been compressed and the pleural cavity is full of the air. So in that case, you may choose 16 to 22 friends, not very, very much of wider tube is required because only the air will come out. So in that case, you can use 16 to 22 friends tube. But if you, use the pneumothorax with sudden other condition like the chronic lung disease or the patient is on positive pressure ventilation or the possibility of ear leak. In that case, you may always white coat tube like 24 to 28 friends. So in a simple pneumothorax without any complication or any preoperative uh, diseases, you may use 16 to 22 friends. But if there is a chronic lung disease, mechanical ventilation or positive pressure ventilation or ear leak chance, then you may use a white coat tube like 24 to 28 friends. So I'm trying to show you the luminal diameter of these friends. It is a 28 friends and it is 32 friends. This is the standard bag available. And this is, I will show you in details later. This is the collection chamber. This is a underwater seal chamber and this is the suction chamber, three bottle. I'll show you in detail. You see, please follow this picture very carefully. This is a single bottle tube. I still can remember once we are in intern in 1996, we used to make this of our own. And we collect a bottle and put the water and make the tube like a physics lab. So uh, in this picture, this is a single bag, single container. So two tube, tube for the patient and this is the outlet. This is inlet and this is outlet. And the inlet tube is underwater seal. That is why it is underwater seal drainage bottle. So in, with one bottle, it is suffice to perform the chest tube, but the science has been developed. Then next came to the two bottle tube, one bottle for underwater seal, then air is coming out, air is going to the another bottle with underwater seal and the suction tube for the air. And the next came the third bottle or three bottles. This is for the inlet from the patient going to the bottle first and not in the underwater seal, then going, air is going to the second bottle. In the first bottle, water is dropping down, air is going out. And in the second bottle, it is under water seal. You see the underwater seal, air is going third bottle and third bottle, air is going outside by the help of the suction. And now from bottle to the box, as you saw earlier picture, the bags are available or box are available instead of this complex bottle system. And nowadays bedside, you see the picture I have shown in earlier picture. This is the collection bottle. This is the underwater seal bottle. And this is the suction bottle, one in three. Is a detailed picture as I show you, collection bottle, underwater seal bottle, suction device. Same, collection chamber, underwater seal chamber, and suction control chamber. You will not put the suction all the time, I will show you. So the other thing next is, instead of going for the conventional technique of chest drain, as I will show you, but the cell drain technique is another one. If you put a very a narrow catheter or pigtail drainage for a small pleural effusion or small or a very, what is so-called the uh, use pleural effusion for the, uh, the malignant cases, 
or refractory effusion. In that case, you use a narrow tube like the 16, 10 to 14 frames big tail catheter with the Seldinger technique. Seldinger technique is nothing but the guide wire. You put an incision, you put a guide wire, through the guider you can dilate the tract and you put the catheter. So there are so many other indications of the Seldinger technique. Then stable pneumothorax or malignant pleural effusion or a small pleural effusion, you can use the Seldinger technique instead of going for the conventional chest drain. So these are the two indications for the Seldinger technique. Small pleural effusion you can use with the Seldinger technique, small tube, pigtail catheter, or once the malignant pleural effusion or refractory pleural effusion, you can use too. So the procedure in details, you need all this equipment, you know it's better. And you have to clamp the tube before introduction into the chest drain. Two sides of the clamping, one is the tip side, so that you can easily push inside the thoracic cavity. Other one is the proximal side to clamp or to control the air leak. And what are the landmark? This is very important. Patient may be in supine position, or maybe in semi-recumbent position. Sometimes you can, uh, you can put the chest drain just sitting posture in a leaning forward so that patient's discomfort is less. So, but the standard textbook or in the journal, it has been said the supine position or in semi-recumbent position. And next, you know, is a well-known triangle of safety or British thoracic surgeon called it as a safe zone. No important structure or vital structures are there in the triangle of safety. How it is bounded? It is bounded by the lateral border of the uh, what pectoralis major and truly and posteriorly the latest mass dot C and below is the fifth rib. So this triangular area is known as the triangle of safety or the safe zone. How can you count it? You know, there's a uh, angle of Lewis, you know, second ribs where it is and turns into the or joint with the uh, what is called mediastina, then you can count serially. You can see easily second ribs, first space, second space, third space, fourth space. So this is the angle of Lewis, second ribs, Lewis. So second space, third space, fourth space. Then you go laterally. You see, you can proceed laterally at the level. Or it is also called the nipple line. Then you may fit the fifth space or fourth space. We usually prefer the fifth space. Then you'll put the uh, marking, you need a marking before going for the incision, you need a marking. How can you put a mark like this? Either with junction violet or any sterile ballpoint pen, you can mark the site of insertion of tube because the site is important because of the safety. Then you need anesthesia. Before anesthesia, we have to paint the, paint the operative pill. This can be done by the chlorhexidine, or you can do it the povidone iodine. As you practice the standardized povidone iodine, uh, you can wash it with the operative site. Then the important part is the draping. You can put another draping sheet over here, or you can put a large eye shield over here, or you can do conventional thing. We usually prefer the conventional draping. Then the local anesthesia. In, in outside our country, they are available in this form. But in our country, you will see local anesthetic by, by Jason company, two available local anesthetic preparation. One is 2%, another one is 2%. And the difference between these, this is mixed with adrenaline. That's why the color is like this. And this is without adrenaline. You can use anyone, but if there is any cardiac problem, arrhythmia, you have to avoid this one. Preferably, you can use this one. So what is the dose, you know? Three to, this is the three to four milligram per kg body weight, and this is five to six milligram per kg body weight. Two percent, 20 milligram per ml. Two percent means two gram per 100 ml. That means 20 milligram per ml. So in that case, if a patient is a 70 kg, you can use 210 or 220 milligram. That means 10 to 12 ml of 2% lignocaine you put at safely, but you can use it in double dose. How can you push? Like this. You have counted the ribs, you have marked the site earlier, then you put the needle in oblique fashion, not in a vertical fashion. Before putting, you may make a flare in the skin. You know the skin is very sensitive, pain sensitive, and other structure is the parietal pleura. So once you are putting the local anesthetic agent during the chest drain, you 
you have to respect these two things to avoid the pain. One is the skin, the other one is the parietal pora. These are the two most painful part. So you have to put the needle in an oblique fashion so that you can avoid. You have to put the needle just above the below ribs. You know the crystal group is lies in the lower margin of the ribs or crystal group or contains the intercostal vessel. But in the upper margin, it is nothing there. So you can put over here. Then you make a flare, flare like this. Then you may push the needle within the pleural cavity so that you can aspirate or you can see what is the content inside or you may confirm whether you have inside or not. Then you can, of course, anesthetize or infiltrate the local anesthetic into the parietal pleura. Otherwise, the patient will not cooperate you. He will get or she will get the pain. Then how will you make incision? You know, we have to make incision parallel to the intercostal space at the site you have mentioned. Then we have to make the incision parallel to the intercostal group. Then you can dissect with this Kelly forceps like this. Then you can, you know, the subcutaneous fat, then intercostal three, intercostal muscle. You can split this. Then you can split. You see the oblique fashion. You see the incision is here. Incision is here and this Kelly clump goes obliquely forwards and downwards above the ribs below. So it is very, very important. If you put like this, every possibility of the leakage, drainage, and so and so. Here, there is a valve action. If you put it in an oblique fashion, there is a valve action. So not easily will be the case. After dissection with the Kelly forceps, you can put your finger because uh, what are, you have to identify with your finger where you are in or out. Like this, you see the 3D image. You can go inside the pleura. Then you can go inside, perforate the pleura. And once you are inside the pleural cavity, content will be pouring. Next, how will you put the tube? After, you see, one thing you have to remember. Don't perforate the pleural cavity blindly. You see? You see? is the under vision. Eh? Your finger has perforated the pleural cavity, and then the content is coming out not do like this. So how will you put the tube? It is said in the, in the journal, the apically for the pneumothorax and basally for the fluid. You know the air goes up, fluid goes down. That is the concept, but does not always require. You may put upside once the patient is lying down, fluid go up and it will come out easily. This is not mandatory, but uh, you can use it also. And how can you secure the tube? You, I told you earlier, you can use the silk or you can use the folding number one is the wider one. And you can use with the two point or four point stitch in all layers or skin and subcutaneous fat. Make sure that there is no leakage around the tube. And you have to fix the tube like this or like this. But there is some other option. Somebody used to use the persisting suture. Uh, a persisting suture so that you can tighten it later after the removal of the tube. But it does not always require. If you fix like this, and if you remove the tube, you put a dressing pad, it's sufficient to control this port after the removal of the chest brain. Even then, it depends on the choice of the surgeon. So how to dress it? As I told you earlier, you need a petroleum jelly gauze to wrap around the tube like this. And you may put a bunch of pad of it and dressing pad like this so that air leak can be minimized. And if there is an oozing around the tube, it can be soaked very easily. So you can wrap it like this. So these are the dressing technique for the upper introduction of the chest drain. And one thing have to keep in mind, even I mentioned earlier also, the last port of the chest drain tube must be inside the tube. Once it is outside, don't push the tube further it may create the, or it may cause the infection from outside into the inside. So it may cause an sterile situation in a septic situation. So please careful, make sure all the port should be inside. Once it is, one port is outside, remove the tube, change it with a new tube, don't push. Then the plural drainage system, uh, after putting the tube inside, you see, this is still the tube is in clamp. You see here, still the tube is in clamp. As I shown you, the two sides should be clamped. One is the later side in the proximal side, and this is still in clamp. Once you will fix the tube with the back, then you can release the clamp. Once you will be releasing the clamp, the content will be immediately coming out to the back. And one thing 
once we will use the single bag once we will use single bag not this one you have to pour the water within the bag up to 100 ml up to 100 that means the tube should be under water said once you will use one bag only what we are practicing in our country so this is the standard bag collecting chamber and this is the under water seal chamber and this is the suction device this is the collecting bag suction device and this is the uh, under water seal bag so when you will put the suction not always somebody will argue whether any other, whether any suction device is required or not only few situations are there where suction devices are important one of this is persistent pneumothorax persistent pneumothorax is one of the indication for suction and the other one is the viscous pleural content and this system in suction device you may control what negative pressure you will put and next once you will find the massive chronic pleural effusion like this you see the ct scan is almost full of full of water or if you find uh, the effusion like this in that case once you will put the chest drain tube don't drain 1 to 1.5 ml of or 5 liter of fluid in 30 minutes don't rapid drain or don't drain all the fluid the target is don't drain 1 to or more than 1 to 1.5 liter in 30 minutes in some of the tank which has been written in one hour so please keep in mind you need an intermittent drainage once you are even in catheterization once you will drain a chronic retention of urine you don't drain 2 liter of urine immediately patient in that case you will get the pain and will get hematuria so this is also true if you find a massive pleural effusion to the intermittent drainage what is the safety measure and 1 to 1.5 liter in 30 minute not more than that if you drain more than that patient may develop the pulmonary edema so how to uh, put the drain bed the drain bed must be 14 inches or 100 cm below the patient you know is very simple why for the dependent drainage or for the gravity so to avoid the red to great flow to get the gravity pressure you may put the drain bed 14 inches to 100 cm below the patient level and one thing where we do the mistake or our sister or the junior do the mistake you see you see this is the patient this is the drainage tube this is called the dependent loop you can not like this if you do like this you can bend the tube upside and down like an s or you make a dependent loop you don't get effect of the chest drain tube or this is worthless so it has to be keep in mind don't make the dependent loop the other one is the no kinking before putting the tube you have to make sure that there is no kinking and what are the complication is very easy bleeding organ perforation any other organ lungs or other structure intercostal neuralgia may be a complication if you injure the intercostal nerve then tube block eh? this is the commonest this is the commonest complication of the chest drain and it has been one of the literature i have seen almost 100% case tube may block it has been seen and if you put a suction drain it may block even 40 to 60% in one of the literature it has been seen so this is the commonest complication of the tube block so you have to follow very carefully whether your tube has been blocked or not the other one is the surgical emphysema or subcutaneous emphysema maybe iatrogenic maybe traumatic and re expansion of the pulmonary edema it may happen in some cases and local infection or empyema may also happen how to take care of the chest tube you just memorize this stop stop as for the site why we look for the site infection leak dressing what do you look for the dressing whether the dry dressing is oozed or wet or any bad odor so for the site you can look for the infection leak either air fluid or blood and dressing t for tube you have to look for the patency of the tube and uh, whether the end of the tube is under water or not o for output you have to count calculate the volume and the color of the fluid and p for the patient whether the patient complies whether he or she is getting better or worse and any distress respiratory rate and spo2 if you do have monitor you may see many other things also so for the chest tube care you can memorize this stop site tube output and patient 
and what are the other care patient must be instructed and of course your juniors or other nurses or the a caretaker has to be briefly instructed about the management of the chest drain tube otherwise it may give rise to disaster patient may die so what happened under water seal water must be kept below the patient at all the times all the times what happened in our country once we will ask the ward boy to go for an x ray for your patient they may lift up the bed above the patient level so it that goes down into the pleural cavity that make makes a disaster or sometimes they may clump the tube that may make a disaster so patient party and the, our caretaker giver particularly nurse must be informed or uh, must be informed about the chest drain management once there is a bubbling into the chest tube or in the drainage bag never claim never claim once i am telling you again once there is a bubbling into the tube never claim and drainage of large pleural effusion should be controlled or should be intermittent otherwise it may give rise to the pulmonary edema i told you never drain 1 to 1.5 liter of fluid in 30 minute more and uh, how to remove the tube or how to removing the tube there are few instructions uh, how you will remove the tube it depends on on the indication if the indication is a pneumothorax er in the pleural cavity bubbling movement has ceased you know the er column movement into the tube that has to be ceased patient must be stabilized clinically that means the symptomatic improvement of the patient lung has been fully expanded on chest x ray and if you put a suction drain you stop the suction and see the underwater seal alone and the clumping of the tube is a controversial somebody says you can do the clump and somebody says no but if in a pneumothorax i never practice the clumping of the tube it may give a disaster so for the pneumothorax when you remove the tube symptomatic improvement of the patient when the bubbling has been ceased lung has been fully expanded on chest x ray and you may find the clinical other method balson is present so and so and there is no suction applied and the underwater seal drainage is observed these are the few criteria for the removal of the chest drain in pneumothorax and of course you have to have a chest x ray after 12 to 24 hours after the early but once the, uh, sorry once there is a pleural fluid drainage this are for the pneumothorax but if there is a fluid once the volume is less than 100 ml in 24 hours mind it serous fluid or serosanguineous fluid yeah the serous fluid so the fluid is serous less than 100 ml in 24 hours is one of the criteria for the removal of chest drain in pleural drainage and once the lung has been re-expanded and no fresh or altered blood is present in the tube you can remove that tube but if your indication is empyema patient must have stabilized clinically and the drainage criteria are met then you can remove the chest tube before removing the chest tube you have to explain patient about the procedure and of course one thing you have to keep in mind you have to uh, the pneumothorax has to be prevented during the removal or surgical emphysema has to be removed so you need an assistant during the removal you can remove the tube during the full expiration or at the end of inspiration that means ask the patient to take a breath then you can remove or you can do a expiration you can remove but if the patient is on mechanical ventilation you have to remove the tube on expiration end of expiration but in other case we usually practice at the full inspiration so in both the case it is acceptable but if the patient is on mechanical ventilation it has to be in the end of expiration so two people you need as i told you earlier you need an assistant and after removing the tube you can have tight pressure or bandage then you can seal it or you may tighten the persisting suture you have taken earlier as both may suffice but in my practice we usually do that dressing only no persisting suture and of course you have to take a chest x ray to up to 24 hours later and as i told you earlier there is an insufficient data to support the uh, refute or to support or refute the clumping of the chest tube during the pleural drainage and when you should consult a thoracic surgeon once there is a persistent ear leak that is fistula bronchopleural fistula once there is a persistent ear leak there might have a possibility of uh, bronchopleural fistula or 
the drainage criteria are not met. In that scenario, you may need consult with the thoracic surgeon. And a special concern are two patients with positive pressure ventilation and patients with chronic pulmonary disease, a chance of recurrent pneumothorax is more. So in that two cases, you may need to have the special concern. And of course, in all the cases, you have to take a control film after 12 to 24 hours of the removal. And once there is a persistent air leak, you may need the pyrodesis. That means the obliteration of the pleural cavity. When it is required, malignant pleural effusion, spontaneous pneumothorax, and recurrent pleural effusion. In that three scenario, you may need the pleurodesis. So many steps are there. And one of the, my MCQ was in an earlier slide was the uh, lethal six. With this slide, you see that this is known as the deadly dogen. Immediate life-threatening situation and potentially life-threatening situation. Immediate life-threatening situation is the lethal six, the airway obstruction, tension pneumothorax, open pneumothorax, massive pneumothorax, pericardial tamponade, and flail chest. These are known as the lethal six, and few others known as the hidden six. These are diabetic injuries, tracheobronchial injuries, sophageal injuries, myocardial contusion, pulmonary contusion, and rupture diaphragm. These are goes along with the chest from actually. So these are the lethal six, very dangerous. And the last slide was this one. Uh, I have asked you, what is this called? This is known as the flail chest. You see the fracture of two or more consecutive ribs at two or more places on one side or even either side of the chest wall is known as the flail chest. You see these ribs, these are three consecutive ribs and has been fractured in two sides. This is known as the flail chest and flail segment there's a paradoxical movement. And lastly, when you will do the thoracotomy, you have put the tube, but how can you understand your patient needs the uh, surgical consultation or your patient needs the urgent laparotomy or thora sorry, urgent thoracotomy. Once you have put the tube, initial blood loss more than 1200 ml. This was the MCQ and you need the thoracotomy. If you see after putting the tube in every hour, more than 500 blood is coming out, you need the thoracotomy. Or if you see more than 400 ml blood in every hour for two hours, more than 400 ml blood in every hour for two hours, you need thoracotomy. Or more than 300 ml blood in every hour for three hours, you may need thoracotomy. So these are the few indication of thoracotomy or thoracic surgery, thoracic surgery consultation during the putting of chest drain or following of the chest drain. And lastly, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. I tried to concise you my presentation within 40, 45 minutes. Uh, if, if you are gained out of my this presentation, I'll be helpful. Thank you very much.